Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the upcoming Labour budget. What we can expect and how it could potentially impact the property market. Now as we are all far too aware, Labour are now in power and the wet lettuce Keir Starmer is at the helm. And let's be honest, their start can only really be described as pretty miserable. And in only a matter of days, we will be getting the actual budget announcement. So. Today, we are going to do a bit of a preview. Now, there's been a lot of rumours about this upcoming budget. So, what I want to try and do here is summarise some of the key aspects that could be in there and how it's going to impact property. So, let's start with capital gains tax. Currently, capital gains tax for a higher rate taxpayer is 28% on the sale of a property. Although this rate is still high, it's a rate that keeps the property market flowing. In the upcoming budget, Labour are proposing to bring capital gains tax in line with income tax. So potentially for higher rate taxpayers you could be taxed for capital gains at 45%. Now 45% is ridiculous. It's almost criminal and in terms of the potential impact this is going to have on the property market it's already beginning to have an impact with a lot of landlords selling up just in, in anticipation for this increase. Moving forward if this actually takes effect two things are likely to happen. One you're going to see a decrease in the number of landlords actually entering the market because this on top of all the other regulation just makes landlords feel like they're being targeted. Now those landlords who don't sell but who otherwise may have sold at some point in the future are likely just to hold on to the properties because the capital gains tax is just too much of a burden. So what this then does is actually restrict the number of properties that may otherwise have come to the market further pushing up rents and property prices. Next up on our list we have stamp duty land tax. Now currently stamp duty land tax is based on the property value with higher rates for additional properties coming in at 3%. Now Labour's plan actually Actually includes a higher rate of stamp duty land tax for additional properties, further targeting landlords and those who want to just build up a bit more of a property portfolio, whether it's a holiday home or some other kind of property investment. Now, something else which has been rumoured is Labour putting a potential cap on the number of properties an individual is allowed to acquire for a buy to let. Now all of this is going to have a negative impact on the flow of the property market because what it does is push up the cost of acquisition for an investor. Now the higher cost of acquisition, the less deals look juicy. And what does this mean ultimately? Well it means higher rents for renters because there's less supply in the market. What Labour needs to do is encourage landlords, encourage investment into the UK property market because what this does is, is it one, it creates competition amongst landlords and amongst property buyers. This competition essentially means that the quality of rental properties will rise as there's going to be more supply of rental properties. Currently there's a lack of supply which means that landlords can kind of get away with doing less than they should be doing. Not all, a, my, a very minor few do this. But what it means is that they are able to do that and still charge premium rents. Third up on our list is inheritance tax. Now currently inheritance tax has several reliefs and resemptions, especially when it comes to family home transfers, basically allowing many portfolios to be passed down to relatives without a huge tax burden. However, in the new budget proposal, they are looking at potentially getting rid of these reliefs and exemptions, which could mean that inherited properties face full taxation. Now, if heirs are unable to afford this tax, they may be forced to sell the properties, which could potentially bring more properties to the market. However, it could also lead to a decline in the intergenerational transfer of wealth through property. Battery is probably about to run out. Now, whether you believe this is a good thing or a bad thing will ultimately come down to whether or not you're due to receive any property if a relative dies. For regular people who are going to be the beneficiary of maybe one or two properties and a small stock portfolio, these are probably the ones who are going to be hit the most when they shouldn't be. Because just because you're due to receive maybe one property or two properties, this does not mean that you have wealth. If you're going to go down that road, Labour really should target those who are going to receive immense sums of wealth, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million pounds worth of property portfolio etc. Next up we have council tax. At the moment council tax is based on the 1991 valuation of properties, meaning it very often doesn't actually reflect the true market value. Labour aims to reassess and realign this with current market value of properties, which will essentially mean that the higher value your home, the more council tax you're going to pay. Now there's been unconfirmed reports that the government could place a blanket 0.5% tax on the value of a property per year. This would mean that somebody with a property worth 
£1,000 would end up paying £1,750 per year in council tax. So guys, there we have it. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of the Labour budget proposals and is it going to have a positive or negative impact on the property market? Let me know. And don't forget to hit that like button, share and of course subscribe to the channel. Until next time.